t-shirt ni kalau kita ikutkan sejarah t-shirt ni sejak uh, perang dunia kedua lagi bila uh, t-shirt ni um, digunakan oleh tentera Amerika sebagai sebenarnya sebagai baju dalam kalau kita ikut sejarah t-shirt dan perkembangan itu sampai sekarang ni dia bukannya ikut musim dia akan continuously digunakan sebagai uh, kain asas when we started to do t-shirts that's when it took off because first of all uh, t-shirts are more universal uh. people who don't wear caps they wear t-shirts at least uh. Arus pemodenan mempengaruhi cara pemakaian. Sifat fesyen itu sendiri sentiasa berubah-ubah mengikut peredaran zaman. Malaysia juga tidak terlepas daripada dibanjiri dengan pelbagai jedama terkemuka dunia. Fenomena ini lebih dikenali sebagai indie clothing. Idea lah, kan? idea macam mana kita kita menggunakan jenama cahaya untuk menggunakan produk ni sebenarnya daripada pengalaman kita jual produk-produk yang Thailand dan jenama kita di Thailand kami dia berfikirkan satu hari mungkin banyak perlengan-perlengan dan perlengan lain so kita fikir mana nak keluarkan produk sendiri lebih so, sebelum sebenarnya cahaya ni kita bermula melalui mana pelik desain orang Okay, melalui uh, kita dapatkan daripada internet uh, selepas itu barulah kita keluarkan desain sendiri lah so desain uh, pertama kita kalau tak siap saya untuk melalui cahaya untuk melalui cahaya dan kita punya pada peringkat awal tu memang susah nak manage penetrate uh, pelanggan ni pasal pandangan pelanggan ni atas jenama pasal jenama cahaya tu benda sesuatu yang very low perception pada orang ni eh. tapi Alhamdulillah pasal kita Dah bermula daripada 2003, penjenamaan Cak Ayam tu bermula sampai dalam 2006 ke 2007 Dari segi volume yang produk kita keluar tu, yang mana sambutan tu Alhamdulillah Kita bermula daripada peniaga sekian kecilan di Uptown, Pasar Malam Dan juga kita pergi bergerak setiap banyak expo-expo seluruh Malaysia kita memang letak harapan yang tinggi untuk um, membawa jenama ini setara dengan jenama-jenama lain yang ada dalam pasaran dan kita ada keyakinan lah, produk ini akan pergi lebih jauh uh, dan kita berusaha ke arah itu lah Sekarang ini media yang paling bagus sekali untuk memosi melalui Facebook so, Kita banyak gunakan Facebook untuk membuat masakan dan selain itu daripada jual-jualan mempunyai banyak ekspor-ekspor ini kita tak ada buat elan-elan secara susun di majalah atau di suatu-suatu so, khabar sebenarnya Jalil Hamid ni dia adalah pengguna t-shirt Cak Ayam ni dia sebutkan kita sponsor daripada awal uh, tapi bila saya dengar dia menggunakan t-shirt kami Undilah Cak Ayam dalam persembahan dia tu jadi malam sebelum dua final ni saya telefon dia Kebetulan saya dapat kontak dengan dia sendiri dan saya bagi sponsor macam tu dia Persaingan-persaingan tu memang sekarang sikit lah Sebab banyak uh, budak muda yang mengeluarkan brand lokal ni Dan sekarang kita pun banyak terima uh, produk-produk ciplak, cak ayam Maksudnya mereka banyak ciplak dalam dengan nama kita lah Sebagainya ada desain di ciplak tu, desain cak ayam tiga suku tu kita pandang secara positif lah bila orang ciplak uh, produk kita tu bermakna kita dia orang appreciate atau uh, orang appreciate produk kita lah dari segi harga kita pasal kita punya konsep kita ni jual barang cak ayam ni kita target pada orang ramai daripada peringkat budak hingga peringkat dewasa orang tua jadi harga kita ni harga yang mampu dimiliki lah siapa feedback yang kami terima daripada pelanggan sebenarnya 
bukan pasal jenama Syariah tu Tapi pasal kualiti kain Customer lebih suka dengan kualiti kain kita lah Siapa yang pernah beli tu Yang pernah beli barang kita Bayangkan bila balik beli kita kita Beritahu pasal apa dia beli cahaya Bukan kualiti kain Produk kita yang paling top sebenarnya Yang kita keluarkan uh, Bila tiba bulan Ramadan lah Kita keluarkan uh, baju Melayu Baju Melayu kita dia buat daripada kain t-shirt So something yang unik Tak ada pada orang lain Okay jadi memang setiap tahun banyak orang kemayakan Kita dah keluarkan lebih daripada 3 tahun Jadi bila tiba je bulan puasa ni Banyak orang datang cari produk Kita punya kelebihan kita Kita ada saiz sama 6 XL so, Kita punya konsep kita tu Untuk biar for everybody Maksudnya untuk semua orang lah Kalau kita tengok perniagaan t-shirt yang lain Mungkin dia target pada orang yang saiz XL Jadi kami punya produk ni untuk Sampai big XL sama 6 XL Kita sebenarnya lah keluar daripada border sepadan Malaysia lah tapi so far lah ada satu dua pelanggan yang dah bawa produk kita ke ke luar Saudi dan ha, sekarang ada perbincangan untuk bawa benda ni ke Dubai sebenarnya t-shirt ni bila saya keluarkan ni saya ni orang yang tak ada hobi okay? saya tak ada muzik saya tak ada fishing tak minat kereta, tak minat motor so produk yang kita keluar ni untuk orang ramai untuk minat dia orang, bukan minat saya dia punya poin yang paling penting di situ cahaya punya follower dia memang pakai punya cahaya punya mungkin dah lupa dia keep continue pakai kerja produk dia rasa keluarkan produk baru setiap bulan dalam 4 atau 5 design ok dan setiap pembelian barang kita selalu kita akan bagi gift setiap t-shirt kita akan bagi setiap t-shirt kita keluarkan stiker kita keluarkan stiker kita bagi free stiker dan kita kita bagi cuma bag tu kita spend mesin stiker je buat Dalam RM70,000 beli mesin tu Khusus untuk keluarkan stiker Untuk dia pergi ke penerbangan Saya nampak banyak kan Budak-budak uh, muda sekarang Yang lebih kreatif Yang punya teknologi pada-pada dia orang kan? Dan dia orang lebih, lebih cerah lagi Masa depan dia orang Kalau dia orang berani lah. Kalau dalam perniagaan ni sebenarnya Berani mengambil risiko tu yang paling penting Kalau semua yang kan yang saya tengok Budak-budak uh, muda yang punya jenama sendiri sekarang Bila dia buat uh, jualan Dia buat melalui tempahan Bila cukup kota tempahan baru dia keluarkan okay. Konsep kami berbeza Kami keluarkan terus 4 atau 500 selai Untuk satu design Dan baru kita jual okay. Kita willing to take uh, the risk lah. T-shirt ni kalau kita ikutkan sejarah T-shirt ni Sejak uh, Perang Dunia Kedua lagi Bila uh, T-shirt ni um, Guna kawan tentera mereka sebagai, Sebenarnya sebagai baju dalam Kalau kita ikut sejarah kita Dan perkembangan dia itu sampai sekarang ni Dia bukannya ikut musim Dia akan continuously digunakan sebagai uh, Kain asas so, Setiap hari orang perlukan t-shirt Dua makcik tu kat rumah Apa pembawang pun saya pun boleh pakai t-shirt Dan dia akan terus pakai t-shirt Kita harapan kita memang tinggi Bukan siapa kita mungkin kemungkinan baru penetrate market mungkin dalam 10 hingga 15 persen je market walaupun kita punya produk sekarang hampir-hampir 900 ribu lain dalam masalah okay? tapi kita masih belum dapat memuaskan hati semua pelanggan masih banyak orang pelanggan bila lalu depan kedai boleh tengok cik ayam ni dia gelak-gelak kan kita mana kita masih dia perlu berusaha lagi lah untuk untuk uh, menarik orang minat price lah. masalah yang sekarang ni adalah masalah pekerja lah untuk, untuk dapatkan designer ni ada, ada sikit masalah lah. so sekarang saya sebenarnya designer bidang terjun so saya sendiri yang berusaha untuk keluarkan banyak design lah cak ayam ni sebenarnya satu benda yang selalu disebut-sebut dengan orang ramai kalau kita beli handphone cak ayam kita beli t-shirt cak ayam tapi kalau kita makan Maggi, kita pergi kedai Mama kita cakap Maggi Walaupun Mama bagi brand lain Kalau you, you pakai apa, obat gigi pun, you pakai brand Dali, you pakai Forget okay? So benda tu dah jadi sinonim, benda something yang kita guna dengan benda yang orang dah guna Dan orang dah ingat dalam kepala, so senang dia nak memori The brand started as Lansi back in 2009. Okay, it was basically an idea from 2007. Uh, I had this blank cap because last time in 2007 the craze was all about trucker caps and all that. 
So I had this blank cap and then you know wanna join in the whole do your own customization cap. So I wrote I wrote the word Lancy on a cap. And uh, back then I was heavily involved in music. It was I was in the hip hop scene. So I wore the cap to a lot of shows and a lot of gigs. So a lot of people thought the cap was cool, like, hey that's a Lancy cap, it's very nice. But it was just a blank cap with a marker scribbled word Lancy on it. Then uh, it's like Two years later, 2009, only I realized that you know it might be a good idea if I turn Lancy into a brand itself. So that's that's how Lancy came about. I started off with caps. So I made the first Lancy caps, which were fitted caps, lah. Coming coming from because back then it wasn't all about snapbacks. It was fitted caps, like New Era caps and all that. And New Era caps were either expensive here or they were fake. Okay, so that's how I decided to do fitted caps, and that's how the first Lancy cap came about. Then moving on, one year later in 2010, we started the Circus Salon, basically as a as an online store to sell our caps and other stuff. Uh, because first of all, we didn't have money. Second of all, uh, other local stores weren't so enthusiastic about carrying our caps and our brand, so we thought, okay, like, we just sell it ourselves. So that's how the Circus Salon came about. And later on, we started Taiko just to see, you know, if it if. Another brand would work rather than rather than Lancy. So that's how Taiko and Lancy came about as brands from the service alone. So being an online store we had no physical store presence, so we don't have we don't have random customers walking by and seeing our stuff. So we had to really push it aggressively on Facebook online. Actually if you look at our designs, I mean when we started up, there isn't much design to Lancy to begin with. It's basically we're selling the word Lancy because we're selling it as a as a brand la, rather than as a as a t-shirt or a cap with a cool design. We're selling the brand Lancy because we want people to buy the brand Lancy because it's something that they can relate to. La. It's an it's an attitude. We're selling it as an attitude brand, you know, not a cool t-shirt design brand. My my initial target audience for Lancy were the hip-hop kids because me coming from the hip-hop background, I know that you know I would love to have a, a cap because back then it was just like KL caps, la. they were the only caps that you can get. I thought it would be nice to have other fitted caps in the market, local brand. Then, uh, when we started to do t shirts, that's when it took off because, first of all, uh, t shirts are more universal. La. People who don't wear caps, they wear t shirts at least. La. And so, more people could relate to the, to the brand now because we have t shirts and it, it appealed to a wider audience. La. So, that's when it went beyond the. Beyond the hip-hop community. Then after that, we it was another stroke of luck whereby we decided to try snapbacks because the main reason that we did that was actually because fitted caps had you know had, had sizes and then sizing was a problem one because people can't get their right size, they don't know their size and second thing for us, uh, producing the caps was another problem because the factories wouldn't want to do small amounts in just little sizes. So we just decided to go with snapback so that you know it's a universal size everybody can wear. Up till today, the I still feel that Lancy has a wider appeal to the, to just the streetwear and the hip hop audience because it's a it's a, like I said it's an attitude. You know, it's something that you know if you're good at something, you generally have that that confidence or that arrogance with you whereby you know you're you're good at what you do, and a lot of people can relate to that. So we have moved into a lot of different markets like the like the uh, motor racing market, yo-yo uh, market, a lot of skills based markets where people can relate to what they do. That's where Nancy is, I would say, at its advantage. Yeah. started in 2009 that time, I think it was still a transition, that was the transitional period where the local people started emerging, so you have friends like 
Tariq and Lester and Mota and all that. That's that's around the time we all came up at the same time, right? Before that, the local urban people or the streetwear scene or the hip hop scene was still very much into the whole international streetwear hype. And back then, 2007, 2008, it was still very much driven by shoes. It was the streetwear. When you say streetwear, it was all sneakers, sneakerhead. Then. I suppose there are some t-shirts, there are some caps here and there with people, but it was still driven by sneakers. Then there was, then, I don't know, that transitional period between 2009-2008, that was when the, the, the shift happened, whereby people started noticing local brands, and from then on, it just changed into t-shirts and caps. It became a whole t-shirt and cap game. It started out uh, with a few close ones because me coming from the hip hop background, at least that's, that's an easier connection to, to other hip hop heads like Jim Hackman and Tegmatic and all that. Those were the first few that actually rocked my caps when it just started. Uh, then after that, the people like Nadira and all that, they were very supportive, they bought the caps, they wore it to their shows, Tegmatic wore it around the world to battle other rappers. And after that, we had people like Ultimate, we had people like Nohu Jan wearing our caps. Uh, wearing our t-shirts. Uh, then we started uh, with oh yeah. Then we started breaking into the more mainstream market. Not really mainstream, but rather uh, into a more a bigger audience. We had people like uh, LMF wearing our backboard cap. We also have like people from from Sabah, Sarawak, Rocking DRV. By part of our notebook, the rapper from Sabah, Rizam, is crazy supportive of us. So yeah, it's a nice mixture. Of, I will call target audience would have been our college goers, you know, the from the 18 to the 25 year olds. That was that was the core target audience. Uh, being an online store, sorry, you will have access to you know a lot of people. So that people from outside our target audience come, they stumble upon the brand, they like it, they buy the stuff. And those we are talking about people like working in the working world, people working in banks, like you know, CIMB more corporate people, they also buy our stuff and the uh, most surprising one was like uh, at the previous bazaar there was actually this auntie that came up and said that her 10 year old son was looking for a Balanci t-shirt they were like, wow really? okay, like, okay maybe there's more to it than, than we know about lah. so I suppose we can say it goes to a very large audience one more thing like those staying overseas Balanci and Taiwan is a very local thing to them so it's something that you know they can feel like, you know, get them connected to Malaysia when they're in Australia, when they're in UK studying. You don't have to be the pop or street but, you know, maybe just because you're studying it. in Australia, you just, you just want to feel close to home, then you know, you, you get a cab or a shirt because no one else there knows it. I would say, vision-wise and future planning-wise, it's very much a swagger salon thing, rather than a Lancia or Taipo thing. So, as a swagger salon thing, thing uh, we are working on having newer brands under the service salon rather than just not seeing time. Something that we can cater to different people. With you know the growing popularity of the service salon, uh, we can ride on that and hopefully come up with newer brands, some of which we're working on now, newer products, you know, it doesn't have to be just t-shirts or caps. And hopefully further down the road we'll have a an outlet. Maybe to have something we call like the Swagger Wagon, whereby it's a vehicle where we can go around to let's say bazaars or event. The people really underestimate the word brand a lot because they think brand is the name that they put on the shirt which is not at it. Uh, whoever wants to come with a new brand has to keep in mind that the main word is brand. It's all about branding so you need to have a concept behind the branding, something that people can, can relate to, something that people you know where it's thinking hey that's something smart, something that they would buy. It's not just a word snap on the t-shirt. So branding is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Mereka menanya dari mana ku datang 
dari langit tertinggi Berangin layang-layang seperti bayang-bayang Caraku takkan ditiru Suara ku akan didiku ke hujung langit membiru Ucapanku diminum perkataan ditelankan QB masih terhebat dari Indo ke Kelantan Ikutkan sejarah T-shirt ni Sejak uh, Perang Dunia Kedua lagi Bila uh, T-shirt ni uh, digunakan oleh tentera Amerika sebagai, Sebenarnya sebagai baju dalam Kalau kita ikut sejarah T-shirt Dan perkembangan itu sampai sekarang ni Dia bukannya ikut musim Dia akan continuously digunakan sebagai uh, pakaian asas When we started to do T-shirts That's when it took off Because first of all uh, T-shirts are more universal. Uh. People who don't wear caps, they wear T-shirts at least. Uh. T-shirt ni kalau kita Arus pemodenan mempengaruhi cara pemakaian. Sifat fashion itu sendiri sentiasa berubah-ubah mengikut peredaran zaman. Malaysia juga tidak terlepas daripada dibanjiri dengan pelbagai jenama terkemuka dunia. Fenomena ini lebih dikenali sebagai indie clothing. Idea lah, idea macam mana sektor-sektor menggunakan jenama cahaya macam menggunakan produk ni Sebenarnya daripada pengalaman kita jual produk-produk dan Thailand dan jenama Malaysia dan Thailand Tapi dia boleh fikirkan satu hari mungkin banyak peraingan-peraingan dan perempuan-perempuan lain So kita fikir macam mana nak keluarkan produk sendiri so, Sebelum sebenarnya cahaya ni kita bermula melalui mana pelik desain orang Okay, melalui uh, kita dapatkan daripada internet uh, selepas itu barulah kita keluarkan desain sebegini lah 